So buju wabano kwe indigene kaz wabajeshi indu deem abading aigwa kabe medeo anishinabe ojibwe kwe indao gaye medewana kwe indao asabe kune zakai gening indu njiba. So hello my relatives, um, my government name is Doreen Day and um, my, my Anishinaabe name is Daybreak Woman and I'm from the great Ojibwe Nation and I'm from a place called Boysport or Net Lake, Minnesota and I'm of the Martin clan. I'm Alana, my um, spirit name is Gabe Anakwed and um, Doreen's daughter. My name is uh, uh, Mosh Kuntz, I go by Kunsi. Uh, Doreen's my grandma, and uh, my clan is a uh, condor. What I'd like to see happen with this um, video is that young people can see other young people as they bring these very special things into the world. Um, today we're here to talk about the Nibi song and how it came about. And um, for myself, it began in 2005 in Hopkins, Minnesota, when there was an international water conference. At that particular conference, our grandmother, Bidasage Iban, Josephine Mendaman Iban, um, was coming there to present on water and the water walks. And um, a wonderful man by the name of Yosuri Moto, um, a Japanese um, physicist, was also there and he came to talk about the water as well. And how when we talk and sing and praise the water and thank the water, how the water loves that. And when we uh, misuse and, and disregard and abuse the water, um, how that affects us all in the end. And so um, at that particular conference, um, I learned the International Water Prayer. And that was Dr. Emoto had several ga gatherings across the world um, and people would attend those uh, water prayer and song gatherings, and they would bring water from their community, their, their, their creek, their river, their lake, and they would travel, and all of the water from the participants would be put into a great big copper vessel, a huge copper bowl. And at that time, um, Dr. Imoto, um, which I should, I guess, also say Iban for him, is um, he, he would encourage people to send love and gratitude to the water and to thank the water. And so his prayer was, water, we love you, we thank you, we respect you. And at the time of the um, International Water Conference in Hopkins, Minnesota, we also participated and Grandma Josephine Bun had us do a traditional Anishinaabe water ceremony which we sang and prayed for the water and we blessed the water in our traditional ceremony that women are um, you know it's our responsibility to do that for our people so after we did that we shared the water in little cups with the people that were present at the conference and um, and that was my first uh, time thinking in terms of that um, for myself. So my family, my daughter and her husband and my three grandsons and my daughter, my two daughters and my son, we all lived in a big um, farmhouse and we had a blended family. And so every day this man, this young man here, Omash Kuntz, my grandson, um, he was little, he was seven or eight years old and um, we didn't live in the city. We lived out um, a ways from, from town. So I'd have to drive him to work uh, to his school. And he went to a Spanish immersion school called Adams in St. Paul, Minnesota. And then I would pick him up after school and I would drive him. He'd come with me back if I had to work um, to my school where I was teaching, um, which was the Guadalupe School in St. Paul on the west side. Uh, and then we would drive home each day. So where we lived, we passed a lake on the left, a lake on the right, which was Tanner's Lake. And then we crossed the Mississippi River. And um, each time we would say the water prayer. And I taught him and we had a lot of fun. We would say it together. We'd take turns saying it. We'd say it fast. We'd say it slow. 
and we just generally uh, made it a part of our day and our travel together. And then um, one day he asked me to say that in our language. And at the time, I didn't know how to say that in our language. So Alana, who is also, you'll be seeing her on this video as well, my daughter, she was in Ojibwe language school at the um, Fond du Lac Tribal, um, Tribal College in Northern Minnesota. And she asked her uh, Anishinaabe language instructor if he could interpret that for us. And so he did send me, um, she sent him, an, or he sent her an email and then she sent it to me. And that was how the words came about. Nipe, izage igu. And so from that day forward, we put a post-it on my truck and then we began to say it until we learned it. And then we would say that to the lake on the left, the lake on the right, and the Mississippi River each day. And then I'll turn it over to Omar Schoons because um, he can add his parts of the story too. So, uh, Buju. Uh, so my uh, English name is uh, Jose Santos. Uh, I am half Mexican and uh, a quarter uh, Boys Fort at Lake Ojibwe and a quarter uh, Umaha from uh, Macy, Nebraska. And uh, so yeah, when when I remember when I was a little kid, my my grandma she would always drive me to school uh, and then pick me up, and um, she would always uh, you know be real, uh, not fond but real uh, uh, courteous of those of those lakes like that, that water and uh, that the Mississippi River that uh, that new bed that we'd always cross, we'd always see every time in the morning, and you know, it'd be sometimes I'd be tired and be falling asleep. But you'd always, you know, tap me on the shoulder like, hey, grandson, you know, we got to say the prayer. And I'd be like, all right. Because so I'd get, you know, I'd wake up how sleepy I'd be and I'd say the prayer. Um, but I don't know, you know, when we, we attend our, our ceremonies uh, four times a year, our Madea ceremonies in uh, Bad River, Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, as a little kid, to my understanding at that time, it was like, uh, we kind of had a song for everything. We'd always sing. We'd always sing everything, all our prayers, all our prayer songs, and uh, we'd sing for, yeah, everything. You know, that's just kind of how, and I'll remember it as a kid. And um, so one day after, I think we had just got back from ceremonies, and um, it was the next day, the next, the next Monday, I had to go to school, and then um, just like always, like clockwork, she would always say, you know, it's time to say the prayer, and then it just something in my mind, I was like, why don't we sing it? Like, why don't we, I was like, how, how, like, what if you make a song? Cause you know, that's all I know. All I know, all our prayers are in songs like that. So that's kind of just how, how it came to me as a little kid, as I remember, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So Omash um, you know, I know that, you know, that I've thanked you many times for urging that song to come out, um, that prayer to come out in a song, I guess. And I just want to, I want this to be an acknowledgement of your, um, the question of how, you know, why don't we just sing it? I remember you saying that, Lita, <laughs> let's just, can't you just sing that? Why don't we sing that? And, um, and so I want to thank you because now as to, to our knowledge, um, you know, the, the song has been sung all over the world. And, um, you know, I know when I went on vacation last year to, you know, I was near the Pacific Ocean and I sang it every day and to the ocean, which I'd been from Northern Minnesota. I, we don't have that opportunity to, to sing it to the ocean very much. So, you know, that song has traveled all over and, um, and it was because of your inquisitiveness and your wanting to sing it that it has made its journey all over and it will continue to do so, especially now with young people. And I'm so happy you're um, on this video today. I wanna, um, I wanna say for the record, uh, she gives me too much credit. 
I didn't, I could never compose something like that, you know? <laughs> so, uh, or, or string a melody, you know, as beautiful as that together, you know, uh, in my, you know, later years or, uh, maybe the past couple years, I've been singing a lot more round dance in Powell. So I, you know, all myself try to compose songs, try to, uh, you know, string melodies together, but I've never been able to do something like that. So she gives me a lot of credit. She gives me a lot of credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to add anything, Alana, from your memories of that time? Uh, you had, a, you played a part in this as well. Um, well, I just wanted to, uh, the only thing that I really wanted to add on top to that is to acknowledge um, Dan Jones, uh, Gagi, Gabe uh, Gabe Benet Siban. Um, because that is, we always like to acknowledge every step of how this came to be. Yes. Um, and he has pa passed on now. And so uh, now I'm going to get emotional mm -hmm. because it's, um, we all had so, so much to do with it. And it's um, become so much to me in my daily life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge him because that's, um, he's an enormous part of that. He's giving us that um, portion of the language that we, yeah. you know, humbly did yet. And yeah. we could have guessed, but we decided, I decided to, you know, when you asked me to find out, I decided to offer him a same in to do it in the best way that we could. And I believe in my whole heart that, you know, this, that the song, um, you know, brings so much healing, not just for the water, but for us and the water within us. And us as a, as, you know, us as a human, human beings in one with nature, you know, it's just amazing how, um, how our ways come to us in such a beautiful way and how we all had a part in that. And so, um, Mm -hmm. Just really honored to be on here with you guys, and I wanted to say, Quincy, you're just as important as all of everything else. So yes, I, I um, I know that um, you like to try and you know give Grammy all the Grammy all the credit, but you're a huge part in that because at your time when that had happened, you were so young that the spirit had worked through you, and I don't think it could have happened without you. Miigwech, Alana. Miigwech, Fabiana. Um, I also want to acknowledge Miss Jo, um, Joanne Robertson, because um, she also had something to do with this too, is that um, the actual recording of the song, the only professional recording that we have of the song was done by Joanne. She had a friend who had a studio in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and um, somehow or another, I don't know, do you want to speak about how that came about, Joanne? It might be interesting for the kids to hear about it as well. Miigwech. About um, drinking water in our communities. And so I was needing music for that video. So I was working with my friend on that. But I, from hanging around with um, Doreen and with uh, No Kmes, um, I knew that part of, part of that was missing, like the spirit of our work was missing. And so, um, I thought it was really important to, if she agreed to have her song recorded to Doreen and, um, uh, Quincy's song, because it reminds us to, to appreciate water. And so I just, since the studio was already going, it was my friend Stephen Lang who was, who was doing it. Um, that gave us the opportunity to have her song, their song recorded so that more people could sing it to the water. Um, up to that point, that was part of uh, something that was missing from my work. And so it felt um, good to be able to um, be able to do that so that the song could get so that more water could um, um, be appreciated through song, and I think it's I think it's happening. Like there's so, like uh, Dorian said, there's so many places you go now and you hear that song and you 
you just want to say, hey, I know that person who wrote, who wrote that song. <laughs> that was recorded in my friend's home studio. What? <laughs> so just, you know that, you know, everyone working together that it's, or it's getting out. And I think, um, um, I don't know, even it's continuing now and I feel that no promises, no promises are just being boss. Mm -hmm. Still, um, helping us do our work, mm -hmm. right? Like every, we're, we're coming up with new stuff all the time. And um, like today she helped me get out of my pajamas and fix my hair <laughs> so that I could do this with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's all I'm gonna say about that. But. Oh, awesome, miigwech. Okay, I'll hand it over to Peter. How do you, would you like to proceed? I just want to say miigwech to all of you. And just my small part in the story is that um, water was always, is, has always been important to me. I grew up in Thunder Bay um, on the creeks of a river. In fact, I, I just came back with uh, today on Earth Day with my son. We went fishing just as I used to go fishing with my dad for many, many years. And it's what connected me, the water connected me to him. I don't know that I prayed to the water, but I know I prayed at the water. It, it's where I found, um, it's where I, uh, I was able to pray and, and find meaning in, in life. And so water connected me to, to Nokomis. Um, I really believe by, by fate, two years ago, I was writing a story, a virtual tour around the Great Lakes that allowed my students to travel virtually throughout and around Lake Superior and, and beyond. And uh, just as I was finishing up the story and it was going to be launched onto Google Earth, I came across uh, uh, Nokomis with my son walking along Boulevard Lake. And I didn't actually, I wasn't actually able to meet her that day, our paths crossed, but Joanne's book um, led me to Nokomis. And um, she, she joined us for a meeting, both uh, she and, and Joanne and my good friend Tisa Fiddler came to my classroom and um, we visited the water beforehand and, and then uh, we, we went to the classroom and my kids took Nokomis on a virtual field trip around the Great Lakes. And then Nokomis told my students about how she actually walked around the five Great Lakes. And I, I know Nokomis was kind of awed by what the kids could do with technology, but you know, it was them who were awed by her because this person actually walked around the five Great Lakes bringing awareness of the need to protect water. And shortly after that, they knew um, that Nokomis's health was failing. And they told her at the very end that um, they were going to help continue her work and, and become junior water walkers. And now here we are today, two years later, and we have almost 200 classes from around the Great Lakes, across Turtle Island and all around the world, really. Um, following in in Okamas's footsteps mm -hmm. and now with uh, the pandemic um, we aren't able to walk so I reached out to Joanne and I said to Joanne how, how can we do this how can we continue this and um, Joanne just so happened to be recording her book and we shared that with the junior water walkers today and uh, Joanne suggested that we reach out to Doreen who I knew actually, and I knew the story, the backstory, Doreen and her grandson, um, and how Nibe came to be. And quite honestly, I remember on definitely on two occasions of the five when I met uh, Nokomis, her humming um, the Nibe song. And then I participated in my first water walk with the For Lover Rivers water walkers and they continue to sing it. And, and the kids were also singing it on our water walk. But isn't it so great now that we can have the whole story shared from what I've learned always is um, 
to reach out to our knowledge keepers. And so I really appreciate the story and I, and I love the song. We all love the song. And so I think it'd be, I think great to, to have you sing it too. Nibe kisa ego kimi kwech ego kisha ego nibe Shall we go? 